If you were to buy a Mazda 3, then after a little while it would probably look like this, a little bit dirty. So I'm really sorry about that, but the weather is, well, we cannot have it nice and clean right now. But I will show you some footage of when it was clean of a different Mazda. But the reason I have this one, and it's very interesting, because it's a Skyactiv X, which means that under here, it's got a very, very special engine, a revolutionary engine actually, because it is a petrol one with spark plugs, but most of the time it'll actually disable those spark plugs and run on compression ignition. So it'll run like a diesel engine, despite the fact that you put petrol in this. And also, this looks a little bit different than your usual petrol engine. Here's a, I think it's over here. It's quite interesting. It's a supercharger, not a turbocharger, a small supercharger. <clears throat> we said we would show you a clean Mazda 3. Ah, that's better. This was the 3 with a regular petrol engine, but in nicer and warmer weather. That was the first time I could see and drive the new Mazda 3, which practically immediately impressed me. It offers a feeling of more space and luxury than you would expect from a car in this segment. Not just that, it's also one of the most pleasant and lovely cars for drivers I have ever driven. And now Mazda has overcome another big hurdle, unveiling a new engine. So before we can actually properly test this new engine, um, we have to have a bit of a lesson in how engines work, how petrol and diesel engines work, in very layman's terms and very simple. Uh, I know it might be a bit boring, so just skip a couple of minutes or so, which this is going to take. But anyway, in both a petrol and a diesel engine, you've got a cylinder and a piston and fuel comes in. Now in a normal petrol engine, you've got spark plugs and that fuel gets compressed and when it's at the right moment, at the right position, the spark plugs fire, igniting the fuel and that creates your motion. That's in very, very simple terms. Now in a diesel engine, you don't actually have any spark plugs. You've got glow plugs, but that's not really important for us anyway. Now the diesel engine also compresses the diesel fuel, but it compresses it to a much, much higher degree. There's much more pressure, much higher temperatures in there. So the entire block has to be heavier and tougher. And uh, when it's at the right position and mixture and everything, that fuel, the diesel, actually self-ignites and that creates your motion again. So it doesn't have any spark plugs. And most of the petrol engines actually have a very low compression because otherwise the petrol fuel would self-ignite, self-combust. And you don't want that because, of course, if the uh, piston is going up, to, uh, with a compression stroke and suddenly the fuel ignites, it will push the entire thing back, just stalling the engine, probably breaking something, it would just be terrible. But anyway, why this Skyactiv X engine from Mazda is so impressive and interesting is because it's neither a petrol nor a diesel engine. It's a mix of the two. So. It doesn't work quite like a petrol engine, and it doesn't work quite like a diesel engine. It, it does have spark plugs, and it does use them, even when it works like a diesel engine. Because what happens in this Skyactiv-X is you've got fuel coming in, but it's a very lean mixture, almost like in a diesel engine. And it compresses that fuel, and then when it's, I don't know, at the right moment, where, whenever that is, it will actually inject a more richer mixture, but very little of it, into the top of the cylinder. And the spark plugs will then ignite that rich mixture, which will cause the rest of the cylinder 
and all of that lean mixture to compress even more, get a higher temperature and so on, and that will cause the rest of the stuff in the cylinder to self-ignite. Kind of making it work like a diesel engine. Did that make sense? Um, so yeah, that's the really impressive part. They've got all this tech and weird mumbo jumbo going on that allows this car or this engine to most of the time, I'll show you that later, to actually work like a diesel engine. So how does this new hocus pocus thing, majig engine translate into practice? Well, one thing is for sure, it certainly doesn't feel like a diesel engine. Um, of course, there's no turbocharger in there. There is a small supercharger, which I guess they need for the correct air fuel ratios, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't, it, it works like a naturally aspirated engine. So considering that over here in Europe, we're mostly used to turbocharged engines now, it takes a little bit getting used to, but considering I've already driven a plenty of Mazdas without a turbocharger, that's fine. And, uh, you know, it's just a little bit more old school. You have to shift more if you want power. You have to let it um, get into higher RPMs. And at about 5,000, this engine really comes alive. I mean, it's not, it's not a slouch before that either. But anyway, I hate saying this, but I'm slightly disappointed. I can put this down partly to me being far too hyped up about this engine. For like a year now, or perhaps even more, ever since I, I've heard about it, I was going, I want to drive this engine. I want to drive it. I want to see how it is. Is it gonna, uh, how much more power is it gonna have? How much more torque, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna be great, magnificent, blah, 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 blah. And that's, that's, that's the thing with everything. If you hype yourself up too much about something, you're bound to get disappointed with it. But part of that reasoning is I was really expecting this to feel a lot different than the regular Sky Active G, which is the two liter petrol engine. I was expecting there to be a lot more power considering this is what, almost 100, 180 horsepower. I was expecting a lot more torque and there is more power and more torque. I can feel that now. Like I said, at about 5,000, it just starts pulling more and more for some reason. It's quite nice. It is naturally aspirated, like I said, so you need to give it high revs and such. But the fuel consumption itself isn't that amazing. We'll get to that soon enough. So anyway, let's talk about how it is actually to drive. So let's talk about the bad things first, or at least not as great things. Um, one, power. Considering that the regular Skyactiv G has, what, a good 120 horsepower, and this has 180, I was really expecting a lot more of a difference in power. I was almost expecting this to be a bit of a hot hatch, but it doesn't feel like it. It's, it's not sluggish by any means of imagination, but you really have to work the engine if you want to get a lot of power out of it. So high RPMs and just, you know, gun it all the time. Now, the high RPMs, like I said, are uh, logical because this is not a turbocharged engine, but, uh, you know, you just have to gun it all the time if you want a lot of power which you don't need all the time, but um, it kind of defeats the purpose of an economical engine in a revolution like this. But like I said, that's if you want constant huge power. Um, the other one which I feel is more of a biggie is the fuel consumption. Now, the fuel consumption and the power, I mean, at least the power really wasn't the reason for the development of this engine. It was more of the fuel consumption and uh, the uh, CO2 and other things. So what this means is, is that even though you're driving it, you won't really know if the engine has lower CO2 emissions or not, but it does. This is the good part. 
Um, the bad part, like I said, is the fuel consumption. I was really expecting this to be a lot more frugal than it is. Part of, you know, a part of that reason, like I said, is because I hype myself up too much. But I have an average fuel consumption in all of 652 kilometers uh, of 6.1 which you have to understand that a lot of it was done in traffic jams with stop and go traffic and uh, also on the highway and sometimes we were pushing it a little bit on the highway but so that's actually a fairly good result but the reason why i'm putting this into the bad category is because it's such a revolutionary engine running like a diesel blah 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 i was expecting this to be lower even the average fuel consumption, the combined cycle, I was expecting this to be like, I don't know, five or something that would almost take my breath away. Um, but it's not. So the highest fuel consumption I have seen, average, was eight. And that one was when we were really pushing it on the highway or uh, the motorway. Uh, and the lowest instant fuel consumption I've seen while actually still driving and not just uh, letting off the throttle was two and a half to three liters. Now, I think that was really quite the sweet spot for this engine. Um, it was when I was going 50 kilometers per hour, which incidentally is the speed limit in the majority, I think, of European cities and towns. And at 50 kilometers per hour, the trip computer, well, the computer will tell you to actually put it from 50 to sixth gear, so top gear. And if you do that, you will be cruising at 50 kilometers per hour at pretty much 1000 RPMs. So this is the really good thing about this engine. Even at 1000 RPMs, it has enough grunt, enough torque to actually pleasantly propel you down the road normally. Even if there's a slight incline, it doesn't really mind that much. Not, not a big incline, of course, but it's very sort of effortless and like i said it's not a torque monster but that's really good and at that point i was looking at the instant fuel consumption and i was going over a pretty level road it wasn't sloping down or sloping up and i was getting 2.5 to 3 liters per 100 kilometers which is immense that's the kind of stuff i was hoping for constantly going <gasps> what um now on the motorway if you're in top gear going 130 kilometers per hour speed limit it'll be almost 3000 rpms and you'll be averaging around six liters there six yeah you should expect around six liters so you know I, I really think the sweet spot for this car is 50 to around 90 kilometers per hour and not traffic jams so that's one of the really big pluses about this engine. It is extremely happy to be driving casually, not sportily, because if you want to drive sportily, you won't be doing anything with low RPMs. You need high RPMs. But it will be completely happy driving you casually, plodding along nicely at extremely low RPMs. So you'll be shifting a lot while accelerating, normally and then you'll just leave it in sixth even if you're going the speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour which is really quite surprising but more important than that you're well you're using less fuel you have less emissions but the car is also so so quiet i mean the engine is so quiet at those rpms if you really push it yeah it's you know it's going to be louder but those RPMs, it's quiet, it's quite refined, it's nice, it's, it's just lovely. And the fact that it is so quiet and nice, look, I'm going 50 now in sixth, and all I can really hear is the sound of the tires, if anything. And because of this and the whole Sky Active idea of Mazda, once again, the Mazda 3 is such a lovely, 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 lovely car to drive. Everything is so nice. The, the feeling of steering wheel, the look of the car outside, 
the look of the car inside, the comfort of the seats, the gear shifter is, oh, it's like a candy you just want to keep licking. Is, no, that, that didn't come out right. Anyway, it's so nice to shift. You do want to keep shifting to get to sixth. Everything is just so lovely about this car, including the engine. So in the end, the question is, would I recommend this engine, the new Sky Active X? Well, one, I've read that Mazda has been quite surprised and slightly taken aback by the fact how popular this engine has become. Apparently, everyone in Europe wants one and they cannot keep up, I guess. So they were not prepared for such an influx of customers wanting this Sky Active X. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, as far as my experience goes, you do have to remember that this engine is a little bit more expensive than if you take the normal 2.0-liter Skyactiv G. Um, another thing I have to warn you about, all these tests of all the cars we do, we can only tell you about how they feel, how they drive, and so on and so forth. We cannot tell you about reliability because having a car for one week <laughs> Well, I mean, it's logical. You're, you're not going to see any faults with it, usually, because these are new cars. So I cannot talk about the reliability of all this technical stuff that goes on under the bonnet. It, it remains to be seen how reliable these new types of engines will be. But, as far as personal experience goes, it's, it's so difficult. I like the slight bit of extra power and torque, even though, like I said, it's not that noticeable. Uh, the ability to drive in very low RPMs is very nice. Um, but I don't see that huge difference in fuel consumption. So you'll have to decide whether, you yourself, whether those extra few thousand euros are worth it for you or not. But like I said, there we go. Again, I'm driving in sixth at 50 kilometers per hour. My instant fuel consumption is 2.6 liters per 100 kilometers. And I've completely forgotten to tell you about the mild hybrid system. Darn it, I knew I'd forgotten about something. Let's go on, on to that. I'll be quick, honest. The mild hybrid means you've got a battery and a small electric motor, which helps accelerate. While braking, the motor recuperates energy and fills the battery. This electricity is then used to restart the engine, run the screens and so on. I do have to say the start-stop system from Mazda is the least intrusive one of all manufacturers. They made the system stop the engine in a position from which it requires the least effort to restart, making engine starts at traffic lights a complete breeze and almost imperceptible. If everyone made start-stop systems like this one, I'd stop complaining. In the end, I can say this. If I had tested this engine without being so hyped up, I would say it's excellent. It's true the X is more expensive though, and it's the first generation of these new engines, making the ones in the future open to more power and less consumption still. I can't wait. Uh, oops, no, 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 shouldn't do that again. The Mazda 3 with the Skyactiv X starts at 23,000 euros and at 25,600 euros with the automatic transmission.